Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. This video is focused on moon ventures, particularly these ISRU units that I'm testing. I adjusted the production of liquid hydrogen from the last time, and so here we are checking that the liquid hydrogen production is in fact enough to refuel things and overcome boil off. So that seems to be working out fine. So it's time to send a lander over there to take advantage of the refueling. And I generally go with the national team lander without the ascent module, which was a hypergolic module. So this way it's reusable and we have two BE-7 engines. It's just a descent module on that plan. So it's not as tall, thankfully. And it basically works out much better. Of course, it wouldn't have enough delta V to land and take off again. It just has enough to land, and then if it gets refueled on the surface, it can return to, say, Lunar Gateway or wherever. So, with that in mind, we have some tourists that we are sending over there. Uh, JPTM and Woozy Boozy. Uh, Theobert is not one of the tourists. That is just a regular Kerbal. And we are launching on a New Glenn rocket, which we can as long as we only have the cabin and the descent module on this. If we had the ascent module, it wouldn't be able to launch to the moon on a New Glenn. So off go the fairings. And we make orbit with uh, plenty of Delta V to spare in the upper stage here. It's not a very heavy payload. After all, the tanks are hydrogen and oxygen, the ones that feed the BE-7 and we plan to replenish those on the surface. There are things I missed recording during this time frame, but for the most part, things are understandable in context based on what we have been doing in the previous episodes. I don't think anything will be too hard to follow, even if some things were missed. So here we are, I'm making orbit around the moon, and we're just using the lander for that. We could have used uh, New Glenn upper stage, I think there was enough delta V. And we are aiming for the landing site, the particular location of our refueler. So we really have to do pinpoint landings or close to it. Not as pinpoint as we'd need to if we were using KES to hook things up or perhaps even building a base manually. We're just landing in the vicinity is good enough. And then the simple resource transfer mod will take care of refueling so we don't actually have to hook, hook pipes up all the time. We uh, end up going a little bit too far and having to burn back, but fortunately we have plenty of fuel in this stage now. After all, this stage is meant to handle descent from Lunar Gateway, which is a high orbit, and it's supposed to be carrying the ascent module with it. It's not carrying an ascent module, it's just carrying the cabin. So plenty of extra Delta V here for whatever we need it for, and in fact we'll put that to use later on as it carries an extra payload or two. So here we are, final descent burn, close enough to the ISRU lander to make it all work out. And... gently. Fortunately, a very wide base and not a tall lander, so not a whole lot of tipping over risk. We have touched down. And now to check out where the ISRU system works. Actually, plugging in is probably not the best thing to do. We want to do a manual transfer, so we leave it unplugged and access the resources and transfer them over. And as you can see, that works just fine, no problems. Now this is a completely different lander with Raider Nick on. Uh, the lander with the other tourists has four solar panels. This has one solar panel and then a red nose to counterbalance the solar panel. So you can recognize it from that. Uh, we've got a, this is where the regolith hab is. And we also have this particular resource uh, vessel, which uses the dynamics lander framework. So this is just food, water, and oxygen that we were delivering to this location. And I was just making sure that everything was resupplied because TAC Life Support was giving a warning, but that's only because TAC Life Support doesn't understand the whole simple resource transfer thing. This is just testing a different variant of the ISRU lander with one sol oh, sorry, one radiator instead of two. 
And ultimately, we'll also have my single part version of the ISRU lander since I figured that this sort of setup was important enough that we should have a custom part for it. Though that end up having issues. Anyway, this time I remembered not to land it on what appears like land but is actually water and we set it down safely on the runway. So there we go. Of course that was done using uh, hack grab which we turned off, don't worry. Uh, but we had to use hack grab because it only has enough thrust for those kinds of maneuvers around the moon. Or on the moon. So this is a ultimate collaborative SLS launching that lander over to the moon. It isn't a light ISRU lander, it's got these really big tanks so that it can contain the propellant for whatever vessels need to be replenished. And that is a good orbit for the return of the shuttle mice, though we're not doing that manually this time. And we just finish up orbit there and continue with the transfer to the moon once again with the New Glenn upper stage. There's got to be a lot of New Glenn upper stage this time around. Don't worry, we used Raptors too. That was on the boosters for the ultimate collaborative SLS, so there you have it. Anyway, here I do use the New Glenn upper stage in order to do the capture burn and various other burns around the moon. Why not? But ultimately for the final landing, we just used the fuel in the ISRU lander. Honestly, we could have probably done with a lighter rocket if we didn't have this much Delta V in the ISRU lander, but uh, it was doable, so I just went with it. The reason we want more ISRU landers is because actually just one takes a long time to replenish vessels, so we would have to time... But it's not totally unwieldy for the little lander that we just landed on the moon. Something heavier like a Mars lander, which actually requires a lot more delta V to get back into orbit around Mars, would be a different story. So, here we are, final touchdown, and as long as we're in render range of everything else, the resource transfer mod will work. And a little bit sideways there. And uh, ignition time makes that pointless, but okay. <laughs> Uh, so, this is the old one, we can tell because there's two radiators. And this is the four solar panel lander with the two tourists and one generic Kerbal. So, we need something for the landers to rendezvous with in orbit around the moon. Of course, we already have Mir and uh, Almaz station, but those are in polar orbit, so it's a little bit inconvenient to get to them. And I decided it's time to launch Lunar Gateway to the moon. And I wanted to see whether it's it was possible to launch it on New Glenn because that was one of the things that they suggested that the Lunar Gateway components will be launched on a New Glenn or a Falcon Heavy or something like that. So, given that, I just... This time I put fins on New Glenn and chose to launch the Lunar Gateway components that I had modeled in Blender. And I think this is probably the first launch of them, or maybe I tested them beforehand. And we will see if that works. Oh wait, I had forgotten to put solar panels on. The propulsion segment of Lunar Gateway is ion engine powered. Well, it's got RCS uh, with hydro hydrazine, but other than that, it is ion engine powered. So we do need really large solar panels. Of course, we need solar panels anyway because it's a station. Or, well, it needs power. That's one good thing about NASA, they don't forget about the solar panels. So, anyway, we are in orbit now with the solar panels and transferring over to the moon. And we are approaching the moon. We need to make a little correction. Now, if New Glenn, it just barely had enough, as we can see. And... The thing about Lunar Gateway is it doesn't need to capture into a low orbit around the moon. It's in a high orbit. It's supposed to be a halo orbit, but we can't really, really do halo orbits without Principia. And with the amount of missions I'm doing, I'm not going to be using Principia. So instead of a strict halo orbit, we just get into a very high orbit. And that does not require as much Delta V, which is fortunate because we're using the RCS and ion engines in order to capture around the moon and sort of barely make it 
<laughs> because there's not that much time to capture efficiently. We have the Delta V. The Delta V is fine. It's just a matter of how long it takes to use the Delta V. As you can see, our stage time is really, really long. And that is the real stage time of it. But that's because Lunar Gateway uses the Ion Engines for station keeping for a long period of time. Anyway, we need a rover. And we need a rover because I wanted to see whether adding an engineer to the ISRU units would increase the efficiency of the ISR units, which it should, right? But we need seats, so that I wanted the command chairs, and we also needed to put supplies, food, water, and oxygen, on to the ISR units. So I test the rover out on the runway, and then launch it with a new lander with Flanagan and Make 1B. Flanagan's a generic herbal, Make 1B is a tourist, so one of the viewers and we are launching it on an ultimate collaborative SLS. So this is two rovers plus the lander. And we do reserve fuel in the Raptor boosters for their return. And after that, it's just this shuttle mice. And they actually are a little bit short of where I'd like them to be in terms of the progress to orbit. I don't know exactly why I didn't think that the rovers would be that heavy, but anyway. And this is the transfer over to the moon. So once again, we will approach the moon with more equipment. Spinning our way in this case. A very nice full Earth because we keep launching in the dead of night on the other side. Uh, it's been rough on the launches. Anyway, capturing with the New Glenn upper stage here. It'd be nice if they actually made it capable of that. But... You know, boil off and all the complexities of making a hydrogen oxygen stage capable of running after three days or so. Might make it hard. I don't know if they were planning on it. So, here is Lander with the two rovers strapped to the side, basically. And both Flanagan and Make 1B are engineers, so they can each take one of the ISRU landers and try and improve its efficiency. So there was a missing bit of activity that was not recorded between um, the first half of this video and the second half. And one of the things that happened was that we landed one of my single unit blenderized ISRU landers at this location. So we'll see one of those. Alright, so we have touched down. And it is time to deploy the rover. couple so relatively painless separation this way or deployment thankfully no tires were destroyed in the release of that rover all right so then we send make one be out to it of course oh sorry Flanagan in this case make one be of course takes the other rover and so here's make one be heading out to this ISRU lander and initially I didn't really care about where I put the seat but ultimately we'll place it in a better location especially since we need to put the supplies so ultimately I have make one be boarded but it looks weird it does verify that the efficiency of the drilling and converting is improved and so I put the seat in a better location and then we have to move the rover over in order to get the supplies slapped on. I accidentally fired those engines so and I do have to make note of my mistakes here so yeah uh, I, accidentally, I, I was pushing shift left shift to have make one B go up and of course that increases the throttle as well. So. I move the rover over and put the supplies on. So those are those TAC life support hexagonal supply tanks and we strap some of those on. And then we have make one be actually do the work of helping out the drilling so that we can replenish their lander. Basically we're just testing that whole business out and see how long it takes. And Flanagan in the other rover is ready to go. 
and we go to the ISRU lander that I made in Blender. Here we are on the road. Interesting purple lights. I bet somebody asked me to do purple lights. I'm not sure though. This one is hopping quite a lot with the drills on. And that's worrisome. But anyway, uh, with a little bit of lag there, we get the seat on and have Flanagan board. All right, so Flanagan is working on the ISRU lander. But then when I turn to this lander, I hear an explosion. <laughs> and that's not good. I check that and something has crashed into the moon. There's some advanced ISU, IRU lander probe debris. So I'm concerned about Flanagan, but I didn't say Flanagan was killed, so that's a plus. But where is Flanagan? So I switch things, make one B is still up there on his lander, and here's Flanagan in the middle of nowhere. Hmm. So I discovered that my blenderized models of the advanced ISRU lander might not be safe on the moon. Perhaps it would be good to at least have the landing legs separate or something. So Flanagan gets back in the rover and heads back over to the lander. So at least our Kerbal is safe. And after Make-1B does enough drilling, I also have Make-1B leave his ISRU drilling unit and head back over to the lander. But I wanted to take off the tack life support units. I don't know why, but I, I guess I figured that they'd be useful. So off we go back over there. It's possible that uh, with Make-1B having spent so much time on the ISRU lander to get the propellant that his own food, water, and oxygen had depleted and so we needed those supplies just to make sure he lived. Anyway, so everything seems fine and we lift off. We have enough. We don't top off the hydrogen and oxygen, but we don't really need to. And so we want to rendezvous with Lunar Gateway and this should be enough Delta V. We are approaching orbit. And that's orbit as verified by the camera turn. Rendezvousing is a little bit interesting. We're in low moon orbit right now. And of course, Lunar Gateway is in high orbit, so we have to do a lot of phasing. And then we have a pretty big burn to do when we finally meet up with it. So we have to get to that quickly. Even though it seemed like we had quite a lot of Delta V when lifting off from the surface, uh, all the rendezvousing did take a toll on that count but we still had plenty of extra here about 400 meters per second unfortunately these docking ports are rotationally sensitive and so it took me a long time to try and get them the right orientation and we actually ended up spinning with uh, Lunar Gateway I'm sure NASA will not have to worry about this but yeah so a little bit awkward there but overall the whole plan worked out and we have functional ISRU on the moon. And that will make tourist visits to the surface all the easier. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.